Here's example three with the second derivative test. And uh, again, just like the other two examples, uh, this is a sim the same one that we looked at for the first derivative test, uh, example three, I think. So um, we have this function z equals 5w divided by the square root of w minus two. So we're gonna find where the local extrema occur. So in other words, where are the mins, where are the maxes, and we don't care what they are, just where they are. So here, uh, step zero, find the domain of f of x, or in this case, we're just calling it z, doesn't matter what we call it. Um, find the domain. Uh, in this case, that's going to be a little more important, and we'll see why soon. But, uh, you know, we want to find the domain here. So what is the domain of this function? Well, 5w uh, doesn't give us any domain restrictions, so that's okay. But here we have a square root of w minus 2. So uh, if we're taking a square root of w minus 2, that means w minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay? So anything you take a square root of has to be greater than or equal to 0. So w has to be greater than or equal to 2. But also, look, uh, we're dividing by the square root of w minus 2. So anything we divide by is not allowed to be 0. Okay. So uh, what we want to do is basically just find out when is it. So what we can do is just set this equal to 0 and then solve for w. Okay. So uh, when is the square root of w minus 2 equal to 0? Well, square both sides. w minus 2 equals 0. Add 2, so w equals 2. Okay. So this is not allowed, okay, so not allowed, not allowed, not allowed, okay. And again, you know, we could just keep this uh, not equal to the whole way through and just treat it like an equation, same thing, doesn't really matter. But what we have here is uh, this restriction, because we take a square root of w minus 2, so it has to be greater than or equal to 0, which means w is greater than or equal to 2, but also we're dividing by the square root of w minus 2. So the square root of w minus 2 is not allowed to be 0, which means w minus 2 is not allowed to be 0, which means w is not allowed to be 2. So if w has to be greater than or equal to 2 and not equal to 2, then both of these together tell us that uh, w has to be strictly greater than 2. Because okay. if you're greater than or equal to 2 and not equal to 2, then your only option is to be strictly greater than 2. So that's our domain here. Okay. So that was step 0. And again, for this case, it is a little more important because uh, when we find the critical points, remember a critical point has to be in the domain of the original function, right? Uh, we haven't had that problem for the other examples yet because we've been looking at simpler functions. But here's our domain here, so we'll write that uh, up here. So d for domain, uh, and it's going to be 2 to infinity. Okay? Or in other words, just uh, w has to be strictly greater than 2. Okay. So that was step 0. So let's uh, erase this stuff here so we have room for the other steps. Okay, so step one, find all the critical points of the function. Okay, find all the critical points. So how do we find critical points? Well, we take a derivative, set it equal to zero, figure out where's the derivative uh, undefined, all that good stuff. So before we do that, let's maybe rewrite this with uh, fractional exponents. So this is 5w divided by w minus 2 to the 1 half. So now uh, when we do a derivative, uh, we're going to have z primed, okay, or we could say dz, dw, things like that, it doesn't really matter. Um, so z prime is going to be, uh, what do we have? We have a quotient here, right? So we're going to use the quotient rule. So this is going to be a bottom w minus 2 to the 1 half times the derivative of the top. Okay, the top is 5w, so the derivative is just 5. So bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. What's the derivative of the bottom? Well, it's 1 half times uh, w minus 2 to the negative 1 half. Okay. So that's just kind of a power rule thing there. And then technically there's a chain rule thing going on, but the chain rule just says multiply by 1, so we don't really care about that. Uh, we can just ignore that. Okay, because chain rule says multiply by the derivative of w minus 2, but the derivative of w minus 2 is just 1. Okay. So uh, not much happening there. So uh, this is bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, okay, all divided by the bottom squared. So w minus 2 to the 1 half uh, and then squared. Okay. So uh, we definitely want to simplify this a little bit here. So uh, let's see, what are we going to have? Well, this is going to be uh, 5 times the square root of w minus 2. And then uh, minus, so this is uh, 5w times a half, okay? So this is uh, 5w 
times 1 half. And then uh, if we have w minus 2 to the negative 1 half, that means uh, this, 1 over root w minus 2. Okay. Let's write this half again a little better. Okay. And then all of this is still being divided by uh, w minus 2 to the 1 half and then squared. So that means 1 half times 2, which is just 1. So this is just w minus 2 on the bottom. All right. Now we want to simplify this a little bit. So we got this complex fraction here. Uh, so let's, um, let's simplify this a little bit more. So this is going to be uh, 5 square root w minus 2 and then minus uh, 5w over 2 times uh, 1 over roots w minus 2 all over w minus 2. Okay. So what we really want to do here is uh, multiply the entire top okay, multiply the entire top by the square root of w minus 2 and then we have to do the same thing to the bottom, right? Anything we do to the top has to be done to the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're kind of at a room here so we'll come back up here. Uh, let's just erase this. We don't really need that anymore. So now the first derivative is going to be uh, 5 times root w minus 2 uh, minus 5w over 2 times 1 over root w minus 2 all over w minus 2. So we haven't done anything new yet. Now we just want to multiply the top and the bottom by uh, root w minus 2. Okay. The blue is kind of fading there, so let's stop using that. So uh, when we do this now, what are we going to have? Uh, let's also erase this down here. Okay, so what we have now uh, for this first term is uh, 5 times square root of w minus 2 times the square root of w minus 2. So that's going to be 5 times the quantity w minus 2. So be very careful. We do have these parentheses around here because this is 5 times this entire quantity, right? root w minus 2 and then times root w minus 2. So this is really 5 times root w minus 2 squared which is just the quantity w minus 2. And then we have uh, 5w over 2 times what? 1 over root w minus 2 times root w minus 2. Well, that's just going to cancel and give us 1. So that's nice. And then what do we have here? Uh, w minus 2 times uh, root w minus 2. So root w minus 2, that's w minus 2 to the 1 half. So let's write it like this. Okay, and if you're wondering why do we multiply the top and the bottom by this, uh, well, it's so we can get rid of this complex fraction here. That's why. And yeah, there are other ways of doing that, but uh, really it's all variations on the same idea, and this is uh, one way of doing it. Uh, it's just really personal preference. But anyway, multiply the big top and the big bottom by this here to get rid of this complex fraction. And we just want to simplify a little bit. So when we do that, what do we get? Uh, 5w minus 10 minus uh, 5w over 2. Then what happens on the bottom? So here, w minus 2 to the first times w minus 2 to the 1 half. So you add the exponents. So 1 plus 1 half, that's 3 halves. So this is w minus 2 uh, to the 3 halves. Okay. And we can simplify just a little bit more. So 5w minus 5w over 2. So what's that? That's 5w minus 1 half of 5w. So that's just uh, the other half of 5w. So this is 5w over 2 minus 10. All over w minus 2 uh, to the 3 halves. Okay, so if you're not too sure about that, so let's just see real quick off to the side. 5w minus 5w over 2. Uh, you know, there's a common factor of 5w we can pull out, right? So that's just uh, 5w times the quantity, what's left? 1 minus 1 half. Okay. 1 minus a half is a half, so what we have is 5w times 1 half, and that's how we get this 5w over 2 right here. Okay. So that's what happened there. Um, okay, so this is our first derivative. Uh, so, you know, just like in when we did the first derivative test video, this is what we got here, but we just went through it here so we don't have to keep switching back and forth between videos. So uh, this is our first derivative, okay. Now we want to figure out uh, where is this guy zero, where is it undefined. So um, let's set it equal to zero and solve for w. So 
5w over 2 minus 10 all over w minus 2 to the 3 halves. When does that equal 0? So uh, complicated things like this, they equal 0 if you have a fraction, a top and a bottom equal 0. That only happens when the top is 0. So we don't care about what's happening on the bottom. So we just ignore that. So uh, this whole thing is 0 when the top is 0. Okay. And uh, this is a nice simple linear equation to solve. So add 10 to both sides, 5w over 2 equals uh, 10. Then multiply both sides by 2 over 5. So cancel, cancel, uh, times 2 over 5. So 20 over 5 is 4, so w equals 4. Okay. Now we have to go back and check, is that in our domain? What was our domain? All the numbers strictly greater than 2. So yes, w equals 4 is in the domain, so that is a critical point. Remember, to be a critical point, you have to be in the domain. Okay. So uh, that's where the derivative is 0. Now where's the derivative undefined? Okay, now you might be thinking ahead a little bit and saying, uh, you know, we can only do the second derivative test at point where the first derivative is defined, where it exists. That's true, but we still want to point out uh, these other uh, possible critical points here because, you know, the only thing we were asked is find where the local extrema occur. So we might have other critical points where we can't use the second derivative test. Now, it turns out that's not going to happen here, but still, we just want to be very careful about that. So we just want to make sure to always follow these steps here. Okay. So, um, okay, this is where the first derivative is 0. Now we want to know where is it undefined. Well, it's going to be undefined when the bottom is 0. And when is the bottom 0? Well, the bottom is 0 when w minus 2 to the 3 halves is 0. And that happens when w minus 2 is 0, which is when w equals 2. Okay. So uh, that would be really bad, but actually um, w equals 2, is that in the domain? No, it's not, because the domain is all real numbers strictly greater than 2. 2 is not strictly greater than 2. Okay? So this is actually not a critical point, and that's really good, because you know, if it were, you know, if this were a different function than it were, then uh, we wouldn't be able to use the second derivative test for that. But it's a totally moot point, doesn't really matter at all, um, because this is not in the domain, so we just forget about it. So this is the only critical point to look at here. Okay, so uh, that's it for step one. So all that works is for step one, find all the critical points. But it's, you know, just like in the first derivative test video, nothing different yet. Now we want to find the second derivative. So that's going to be relatively unpleasant, but not too bad. Well, we'll see. Okay, so here's our first derivative. We're going to use that to find the second derivative. And actually what's nice, when you do the second derivative test, you know, we did mention it briefly in the last video, um, you don't have to simplify so much because you're not going to set it equal to zero and solve for the variable or anything like that. Uh, you, you just want to find out where, or you just want to evaluate it at certain points. And you don't even care what the value is. Uh, all you care about is whether it's positive or negative for zero. So anyway, what do we end up with? Uh, z primed equals 5w over 2 minus 10 all divided by w minus 2 to the 3 halves. Okay. So now we want to find the second derivative, so let's go ahead and do that. So z double prime equals, uh, again, just a quotient rule thing, so bottom times the derivative of the top. So what's the derivative of the top here? Well, uh, 5w over 2 minus 10, so this is 5 halves times w, uh, so the derivative of that is 5 halves. And then minus 10 is just a constant, so its derivative is 0. So really, uh, bottom times derivative of the top just gives us this. And then minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of the bottom is uh, 3 halves times the quantity w minus 2 to the 1 half. Okay, so that's just a power rule thing there. And then chain rule says multiply by the derivative of w minus 2, but that's just 1, so forget about it. And then all divided by the bottom squared. w minus 2 to the 3 halves, and then squared. Ugh, right? Pretty bad. Um, we can simplify a little bit, but really the only thing worth uh, even simplifying at this point is just uh, 3 halves and then squared. So if you take 3 halves, and so really, what are we doing here? We're w minus 2 to the 3 halves and then squared, so we multiply the exponents. So that's just going to give us uh, to the third power. So that's the only thing really uh, worth simplifying. So let's not write the whole thing over again, but let's just change this here. So uh, this is going to be w minus 2 to the third power, because 3 halves times 2 just gives us 3. 
So we have that down here. Okay. So that's what's going on there. All right, and that's step two, find f double prime of x. And again, uh, we don't have to simplify beyond this. There are some other things we could do. We could uh, simplify a little bit up here, factor, etc. But it's just totally unnecessary. Because now what we want to do is evaluate the second derivative at each critical point where the first derivative exists. Well, we only had one critical point uh, at all, and it was w equals 4, right? And yes, the first derivative does exist there. The first derivative is 0 there. So that's good. So now what we want to do is uh, evaluate z double primed of 4 and hope we don't get 0. Because okay. if we get 0, then we have to try something else. But um, let's just see what this is. 4 minus 2 to the 3 halves. Ugh. So 4 minus 2 is 2. So what we have is 2 to the 3 halves. And then uh, this is times 5 halves. OK, minus uh, what's happening here. So if w is 4, then we have 5 times 4 divided by 2. OK, so 5 times 4 is 20. Divided by 2 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. So this is just 0. All this is just 0 over here. Uh, now, we do want to make sure that the rest of this is real numbers, right? So 4 minus 2 is 2, which is positive. So 2 to the 1 half is OK. So this is just 0 times real numbers. OK, so that's all OK. All right. It's really, we didn't even have to worry about that too much, but still, just to be thorough. Um, and then what's happening on the bottom, uh, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, so this is a 2 cubed, we'll just write that. All right, now we just want to simplify a little bit, uh, not even simplify, we just want to know, is this a, well, first of all, that's it for step 3, evaluate f double prime to c at each critical point. Okay, we did that. Now step 4, uh, if the second derivative exists, which it does, you know, this number totally exists, it's, we're not doing anything crazy dividing by 0, uh, nothing like that. So um, just apply the second derivative test. So what kind of number is this? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it 0? Well, let's see what's happening. So uh, 2 to the 3 halves times 5 halves divided by 8. Now, we can absolutely simplify this, but there's no point, because we just want to know, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it 0? 2 to the 3 halves, what kind of number is that? Uh, that's a positive number, right? You take a positive number to a positive uh, exponent like that, okay, we just get a positive number. So uh, 2 to the 3 halves is a positive number multiplied by 5 halves, another positive number, divided by 8, another positive number. Positive times positive divided by positive is a positive number. Okay. So what does that tell us? Uh, the second derivative test tells us that we have a local min at this uh, value of c, which in this case is 4. So uh, let's write that down. So z uh, has a local min at w uh, equals 4. Okay, so usually we deal with x's and y's and things like that and f of x, but you know, this, our function is called z, the variable is called w, so z has a local min at w equals 4. Um, and that's it, you know, there's, we don't have to go back to the first derivative test because uh, we didn't get anything inconclusive. You know, this is strictly greater than zero, so the second derivative test told us this, local min. Um, and that's it for example three. So, you know, uh, whether or not this is really better than the first derivative test, it's kind of a personal preference almost, because we didn't have to set up a sign chart. Um, you know, if we avoided setting up a sign chart and we didn't have to test the first derivative in two different intervals, um, which is nice, but the trade-off there is we had to find the second derivative which is kind of messy, but what's nice about this is we don't have to simplify it beyond that, right? Because we just want to evaluate it, and we don't even care what the value is. We just care, is it positive, is it negative, is it zero? So in this case, uh, maybe the second derivative is almost, or the second derivative test is almost a little bit better, but you know, it's really hard to tell before you jump into it. Um, so anyway, that's example three um, with the second derivative test, and we got the same result as with the first derivative test. But here, we're only asking where the local extrema occur, not what they are. Okay. So that's example three. So example four coming up next.